out here. We're in Texas, as you know, and so the weather is back and forth. A couple of weeks ago, we had snow, and today it's nice and sunny out in the yeah. 60s. So good weather. Yeah, yeah. I'm in in the UK. You know, I'm in Belfast. Oh, like got Northern you. Northern Ireland. So the yeah. weather up here is like uh, maybe five degrees or something. You know. Wow. Wow. I don't know what yeah. it is in, in American, um, the way you guys do your temperature, but it's like yeah. almost below zero, you know, almost, yeah. almost, oh, you know. Cool. But it's yeah. nice, it was nice today, it was warm, you know, like it was a nice yeah. day as well. So, really? yeah, well, so cool. my, my name is Nuno, by the way, Chandler yeah. and Regina, yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. And how do you pronounce the last name, Betis? Betis, yes. yeah. Betis, okay. So, yeah. you know, just before we start, I just wanted to let you know, like, why I asked you for this interview. So, sure. so I started, like, a project, like, Empowering Africa. So, mm -hmm. one of my intentions, yeah, is to share what other people are doing, you know. So, I've been talking about, like, you know, like, there's a, a lot of opportunities in Africa, you know, like yeah. Dr. Arnett. But it's, it's better when, you know, you can show that there's some people who are doing it, like to, you too, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, like you took like actions, you did it. Yes. You know, you're selling the products, you're going out there, you're doing mm -hmm. your thing, you know? I, I saw some of your posts on pop-ups, events, mm -hmm. and all those things. So yes. it's like, I just wanted you to share your, your journey. You know, it doesn't matter if you're making 1,000, or 10,000, 100,000, you know, it's not yeah. just the money, but your journey, you know, like from why Africa, why Ghana, why Moringa, why those products, and yeah, like, you know, your why inside, you know, like what dr drove you to start a business from Africa, and also, yeah, feel free, we like friends, you know, so okay. yeah, I just sure, want to sure. uh, make you feel welcome, okay, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, so, yeah, basically most of the questions they are around that thing. Africa, I put some some notes here just to let you know. Africa, Moringa challenges. You know, like when you're starting a business, like import, like from Africa. Yes, it's, it's even harder. You know, yes. if you yeah. notice, yeah, like in our group, there's no many people sharing their successes. Yes, really, because definitely. it's hard. You know, it's not everyone. You know, a lot of us, like me, I have ideas. Yes. You know, like you guys, you are far ahead than me. I just know <laughs> the knowledge, but I yes. haven't implemented like you. You know, I haven't, uh, I, you know, I didn't go out there and sold products. I didn't import. I didn't yes. talk to, through Moringa or partners, you know. Yes. All that stuff that you did is really important. Sometimes it's important to share it. Yes. And, Absolutely. you know, not just... You know, Dr. Arnett, she does a great, amazing job, but it's, it's also, I love to see other people doing it, you know? So, yeah, so yeah. some challenges that you faced whenever you wanted to import from Africa or even whenever you start selling the products, you know, like, you know, like you have a new product, bringing it to the market, like in Texas, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. how people, you know, like uh, accepted the product, you know, whenever mm -hmm. you went to those events, some people, they don't know about African products. <laughs> you, right, know right, right. Mean, you know what I'm saying? So, and, yeah. uh, and the other one is like the marketing as well. Like what type of marketing you do and, you know, how, you know, like something I noticed, yeah. Even though there's COVID, yeah, you guys, you out there, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. you're not just like sitting at home or in the laptop like me trying to figure out things you go out there and you meet people so mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. basically you know this conversation it's around these topics it's about you you know like you yeah. like teaching me and teaching other people like how mm -hmm. you did it and also what you are learning with your process okay, sure. okay. so sure. is there okay. any question or anything you'd like to ask me before we start so um how long no no how, how long have you been engaged in what you're doing similar to this yeah like uh what do you mean like in terms of the african project or in terms of um like i've been in the group for one year yeah but okay. uh before 
starting like before like joining the group of I was doing like e-commerce okay mm -hmm. like selling products to to America from China mm -hmm. everything online drop shipping yeah? yeah but my heart wasn't there you know so and I've been thinking a lot about Africa how mm -hmm. could I help Africa you know so mm -hmm. You know, like in December, I say, you know, like I, I don't want to be selling like the products like physically, but I want yeah. to inspire other people and I want to be like yeah. a reporter, you yes. know, like, yeah, yeah. So, and I, what I believe, like, I, I know the digital part, digital skills, so mm -hmm. I can bring that to the table, you know, like, yeah. so I've been talking to people who are doing other things, you know, like. Even like on my Instagram, I did an interview with someone. My friend is in Colombia, you know, he's, he's working in Colombia, helping children. So mm -hmm. yeah, basically I've been like, you know, like helping people to spread their message by, you know, yeah. like in a way. But this year I want to focus on Africa. It's exactly. something I'm passionate, like you too, I'm passionate about as well. You know, yes. not just knowing the knowledge, we all know, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, telling people, hey, you know, like, like people are buying products from Africa. In Africa, there's high quality products. Yeah. You it, know? It very much so. yes. And by buying a product from Africa, you are supporting African businesses. You are yes. supporting yes. African, like, you know, like the local economy. Mm -hmm. So that's the same vision we have, you know. So I just, you know, like I know, you have more experience than me in these, you know? So I just want you to help me to share your journey with other people. So okay. like be, before we start, you know, like when I introduce yourself, can I say like, um, I just wrote something here, yeah? But like, like today, like we have, like we have a special guest, Regina and Chandra, Ch Chandler Bettis from, they, you know, like they run an African based business selling mm -hmm. products that are produced in Africa, something like yes. that, you know, I just yeah. wanted to know if it's okay. And yeah. the name of your company is Sankofa, yeah? Yes, Sankofa, Sankofa Imports. Sankofa Imports, yes. Sankofa Imports. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, cool. And Regina, where, where, are you where are you from? Like, what's your background? Okay, so I am a, my, 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 I'm a military brat. So I've been all over the world, basically. My dad was in the service and we just grew up in the military. Right now, I, I um, reside in Austin, Texas, but I've been to Chicago, Hawaii, wherever uh, you think of, we've been there. Germany, we've been uh, to, to, to all these different spots. So the, for me, where, how I ended up here is just being a military brat, and, and this is where we made home. Okay, how yeah. about you, Chandler? Yeah. Um, so I was born and raised in Oregon, yeah. in the United States. And I joined the Army when I was 17, and I was in the Army for almost nine years. Nine years yeah. uh, I got out of the Army, and um, I've been working in the semiconductor industry since then. Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, in the semiconductor industry since uh, 90, 1994. Mm -hmm. um, and we just started this business. We established in this business in, in 2019. Mm -hmm. And we currently reside just north of Austin uh, yeah. in, a, in a town called Round Rock. Okay. Yeah. Round, round, round Rock. Round Rock. Okay. Round Rock, Texas. Round yeah. Round Rock, yeah. Sorry, Texas, yeah? Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. So we're going to start. I'm just going to do the introduction, then we start. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Empowering Africa. Today we have two special guests, a couple, a special couple, uh, Regina and Chandler Bettis. Um, okay. They're running an African-based company selling mm -hmm. products that are produced in Africa. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, my friend. Welcome, Chandler. You, Welcome, uh, Regina. How are you thank guys you. doing today? Doing, doing good, very doing good. Very, very good. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So thank, thank you very much for giving me your time to be here today. So the reason why I ask you for this interview is for you to share your journey, you know, mm -hmm. the journey of importing products from Africa and mm -hmm. selling the products to customers in America. And also, yes. you know, like your journey, like your experience, you know, and how other people could help 
learn from you as well. So I've, I've written down some questions I'm going to be asking you. So the first thing I want to ask you is, why did you choose Africa? Why did you choose to start a business around Africa? So I guess I'll start off first. Um, ever since I was a little girl, um, living in America, you always find a piece that is missing from you that you know you can relate back to Africa. And with me growing up, I always wanted to go to Africa. I always needed to go back to see what was there in order for me to understand what's here, you know. So um, one year, my husband basically surprised me with a, a, a trip to Africa. Oh. And the first trip that we went to was going to Ghana. But the only reason why we ended up in Ghana is because of a church member of ours that attends our church. Mm -hmm. He is yeah. from Ghana and he became our host. So that's yeah. how we ended up in Ghana the first year. They were basically um, brought us there, showed us around, you know, showed us what the life was like there. And it just, it just stuck, you know, that we needed to do something and bring it back from Ghana or Africa to America. And yeah. so I'm gonna let my husband so, speak on the second half. So then uh, that was, the first trip was in, mm -hmm. um, 2018 mm -hmm. and it was just purely vacation um i was watching television one day and, and saw a movie um and there was a specific scene in the movie where the lady um returned back to the continent mm -hmm. um uh, she was a former slave and there was a scene on the beach where she arrived back on the continent um and, and then it struck me um that that is where my wife and i should go so I started doing some research and um, looking at some of the more stable, democratically stable countries in, in the continent, mm -hmm. and I chose Ghana. Ghana, yeah. So um, we, we talked, um, and we took our first international trip together um, to Ghana, and it was a 10-day trip. And so um, going back to your question, so from that, we chose to go back in 2019 for a three-week vacation. 20. Uh, no, it's, it's 19, 2019. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, in January of 2019, um, I bought tickets for a round trip for three weeks. Three weeks. Uh, it's yeah. pretty, pretty significant vacation for us and, yeah. and most significant for most Americans, especially in the continent. Yeah. Um, and... Um, we booked the tickets, I bought the tickets, and then a couple months later, we got to thinking, you know, <clears throat> we're not seeing in the American consumer See. marketplace um, fundamentally just a very, very minute portion or aspect of African products. Yes, really, yeah. um, in order to purchase African products, African produced or manufactured or crafted products, in America, one has to go to what we call specialty shops. Yes. Yeah. And and um, they're very country specific. Uh, the products they're being offered, and we realized that we what we saw there is either on par or above what we're normally used to as far as the quality mm -hmm. of consumer goods here in the United States. And we got to talking, well, fast forward to July of 2019, we actually formed, officially formed and established Sankofa Imports on July 15th of 2019. And at that point, it turned into, from a vacation, a three-week vacation, into a business trip, just like that. And that's how we got started. So that's the starting aspect of of, of how the business started. But yeah. when you take it back, it was really the lady that you were listening to, Dr. Dr. Harnett. Harnett. So, Harnett. so yeah. between the time I, I booked the, the vacation and the time that we established, I think either right after I established, we established or right before, um, I was doing a lot of, cer certainly doing a lot of research on how one can actually, number one, import uh, and, and fundamentally, where is the product? Where, 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 where can we uh, purchase product? What do we want a product? Or what do we want to sell as far as the consumer's um, goods are concerned in America? Yeah. And 
I happened upon Dr. Harnett um, on the internet and uh, I paid $400 unbeknownst to my wife. And she said, what? You did spent $400 on what? And I said, they're with me. I was like, you know, let's, let's find out what it's about. And I said, hey, it'll, it'll come out of my own pocket if it doesn't pan out to me. Yeah. So, you know, she offers the, I think there's 12 or 13 courses in her, in her program. Um, nothing against Dr. Harnett, but uh, I, I started the first course, and I, I think I, I think I just finished the first course. But after that, I thought to myself, I can do this. I don't, I don't need. I can do this. And sure enough, uh, I, I spent more time researching, and we finally uh, galvanized the categories of products that we were going to, we wanted to import. So yeah. that's, yeah, that's how it started with Dr. Yeah. Harnett. And so, uh, uh, so, sorry, just before we go into the business, I wanted to know, like, what was your first experience of Africa? You know, like the first time you, you went to Ghana, what was it like for you too? Like, like the well, we people, first... the food, what was your experience? Yeah. So I'll, I'll start off and say by the first time that we went there, we got off the plane, it was unbelievable yeah. just 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 coming into the airport and seeing miles and miles and miles and miles of africa and i was like i was so amazed but to be on ground around the people in the atmosphere it was very rich to me you know there's yeah. things that i seen there that they can it, america unless you go will never understand mm -hmm. that the fruit of everyone's labor there they're so wealthy and i'm not talking about wealthy as it goes for structure or money. or or money but just within the people themselves mm -hmm. and and that they're so motivating to get you to get out there and do whatever it is you need to do mm -hmm. um by seeing the simplest things out there like when we come here when we live in america we have the, the children here don't realize the benefits that they have here and I'm not saying that the children there are, are less fortunate. It's just a different vibe, a different understanding of life, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just it just opened my eyes up to a whole new world of, you know. And you, you felt welcome. Me. Did you yes. feel welcome? Very welcome. Very yes. welcome. Yeah. So when yeah, for her and for me personally, mm -hmm. when I got there, it was a uh, it was very it was very peaceful. Yes. I felt very, very at peace and very comfortable. comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just so relaxing to yeah. me. Um, and just, just like my wife said, you know, coming in, uh, above Accra and looking at the miles and miles of city, wow. uh, it's just amazing. And mm -hmm. so, as she stated earlier, um, you know, yeah, the first trip, it was unbeknownst to, um, one of our deacons in our church who is from Ghana. He's also a, a U.S. Army veteran. He, he's, he was born in Ghana. He was raised in Ghana. Yeah. Uh, he became a U.S. citizen. He served 20 years in the Army. Um, and, you know, again, oh, unbeknownst to him, that was our first vacation. And he said, hey, let me let me host you. And so he, uh, he somewhat facilitated um, much of what we did, either directly or indirectly, with his brother. So it ended up his brother... Um, was basically he drove his brother drove us around wherever mm -hmm. we wanted to go for for the whole ten days. Mm -hmm. uh, he recommended us to us resorts and hotels, places to stay at, places not to stay at. Yeah. Um, and we took it we took advantage of his his mm -hmm. advice, mm -hmm. and that was the best thing we could have ever done is to have a guide when we went there, somebody who knows the lay of the land, uh, somebody who's in touch um, with somebody who who they know there. Mm -hmm. And it was it was perfect. It was great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to to visit Africa, to go to Africa. You know, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I was born in Cape Verde Islands, but I've lived most of my life in Europe, in Portugal and also in the UK, oh. like United mm -hmm. Kingdom, you know. So like after how many after almost uh, like the last time I was there was four years ago. But mm -hmm. I had a gap over like uh, 13, yeah, 13, 14 years. I didn't go back home. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, when I was there, I felt at home. I felt, because when I went there, I went to see family. I went to see my mom. So mm -hmm. I felt really at home. I felt like I was in a five-star hotel. Yes. And, 
But the, one of my greatest experiences was when Cape Verde small islands, when mm -hmm. I moved to a different island, I met someone who was a guide and the guy showed me everything around and the experience was so different when you go with someone who knows the place, you know? Yes. So, yeah. okay. Thank you very much for sharing your experience in Ghana. So we're gonna go back into the business thing. Um, I noticed that you talk a lot about Moringa and other products. Well, what's your, your best seller? What's, what's your best seller? Um, well, I don't know. I think maybe Skin Gourmet. Skin or Gourmet or and, True and True Moringa. Yeah. yeah. True Moringa. Okay. Well, uh, I, would even say, I would even say the coffees. Um, we, so, we offer a Sealy coffee and uh, Gold, Gold Coast, Coast coffee. And we've actually sold out of those as well. So the coffee. I, I would say actually um, probably the coffee is actually the leading leading um, product that we sell. Mm -hmm. uh, and definitely Skin Gourmet and True Moringa is a close second because we have more inventory to offer. We have more products, a variety of products uh, relative to True Moringa and mm -hmm. Skin Gourmet, uh, and it, but less so for the coffee. But again, we're out of inventory for the coffee, so. Yes, mm -hmm. and how do you select a product? Like for someone who's just uh, like new, like uh, what criteria do you use to select a product to, to import or even to sell from a, a distributor? Um, so, so uh, I'll go back to Dr. Harnett. Um, she has a, a platform, um, I guess what you would call a clearinghouse. Yeah. Uh, she vets um, companies uh, in the continent um, for the quality of the product, uh, the business acumen, uh, the business history. Mm -hmm. And then she posts them as a legitimate, viable, uh, trustworthy companies on a platform called MyKibo. So that's where I started. I think uh, MyKibo was on, uh, I'm sorry, True Moringa, uh, Kaime, a Sealy Gold Coast Roasters, and I think there was one other product that was on my Kibo, offered on my Kibo. And that's uh, another method by which we actually chose the products. The other method, uh, the primary, well, the secondary method was, was me just doing a lot of research. research. Mm -hmm. I think I went through, um, there's, there's a couple of, of government uh, agencies, Ghana government agencies government that story. promote um, small business businesses mm -hmm. in Ghana um, and they have a variety of, of categories um, and so fundamentally we agreed between the two of us after we established that uh, we would offer to the American consumer fundamentally four product, product categories mm -hmm. women's fashion accessories coffee and tea mm -hmm. home decor items um, and natural skincare product. So certainly uh, the products that she had on my Kibo fit. Um, and then the other products I did research on and, and we agreed that we would offer those companies as well. Okay. So, uh, so the next uh, questions, yeah, I think is gonna be one of the most uh, important questions because it's mm. the steps, you know, like when you think about products, you contact mm -hmm. the supplier, you know, you, you import the product, you find your way to sell it. I wanted you just like in a few minutes, you know, like explain like even for one of the products or your coffee or the skin product, like the 